Hello everyone, welcome to this session on Markdown. Let's first start with what is Markdown. So Markdown is a lightweight and popular markup language. It is very similar to HTML which is made up of markup text and it is used by data scientists and data analysts to make their Jupyter Notebook more attractive, more readable and to give a website-like feeling to their notebook. Right? So you can see if I want to jump to any of this sections which I created today. So let's say I want to go to my 8th section of unordered list. I can simply click on this link and I can jump to my 8th section. In the same way I have a back to top button here. If I click on this button it is going to take me to the top of my notebook. Right? So you can see how this website like environment is very useful for my users to jump between sections. Right? So we are going to see how we can give this website like environment to our users shortly. The first thing that we are going to cover today is about headings. And before that, the most important thing for Markdown is you should have your cell block selected as Markdown, right? So by default, we get code block in Jupyter Notebook, but you can use this drop down list to select the Markdown one, right? Now, once you have done that, you can start with heading, right? So I've given headings like what is Markdown here? You can give this heading by using a hash symbol followed by a space. A space is very important, right? So hash symbol followed by a space and then your message. For example, I'm giving a message like markdown intro or the title, right? In the same way, if you want to give some major headings or subheadings in your Jupyter Notebook, all you have to do is just increase the number of hash, right? So after one hash, I'm using two hash here, then three hash, and the subsequent hashes will decrease the size of your headings. In the same way, you also have a tagged option available, right? If you don't like the hash one, you can use the tagged one. You will have an open tag as h1 and a closing tag for h1. And in between these tags, you can give your title, right? So to execute this cell block, what I have to do is I can either click on this run button or I can execute it by using my keyboard shortcut, which is shift plus enter, right? As soon as you do that, you can see I am getting all the headings which I have written. Now you can see the headings are decreasing in size as we go further. So that's why H1, H2, S3, H4, H5 and H6. Alright, the second topic is block codes. So what are block codes? Block codes actually help you to give an indented uh, kind of feeling for your next paragraph, right? So let's say I have this as you know introduction to Jupyter Notebook as title and I want my next paragraph to be indented Right, so I will use this arrow symbol or you can say greater than symbol for using the block code or for using the indentation, right? If I execute this block, I will again press shift enter and now you can see this sentence or this paragraph is coming in indented form, right? So this is very useful to improve the readability of your notebook. The third topic is to insert mathematical symbols in your Jupyter Notebook. So to insert a mathematical symbol in your Jupyter Notebook, what you have to do is use two dollar sign and between those two dollar sign, you can give slash sum. So if you want to insert a summation symbol, then you have to give slash sum. If you want to give a for all symbol, you have to include slash for all. Right? For different equations and for different mathematical symbols, I have given this to websites where you can find you know, the definition for different mathematical symbols to put between these two dollar symbols. Right? Now if I execute this, you can see I have a summation symbol here and a for all symbol. So these mathematical symbols are very useful when you want to share some equations with your users or client and they are used a lot in Jupyter Notebook. Next is the line break. Let's say I want to give a line break in my Jupyter Notebook paragraph, right? So you can use this BR track or the break tag. So once I execute this, you will see that BR tags and it is awesome will be in next line, right? So yes, it's working. The next one is bold and italic text. So if you want to insert some bold text or italic text in Jupyter Notebook, you have to use two star symbol, right? So you have to use double star and in between that you can write your message or the or the text that you want to be bold. If you don't like the double star symbol, you can also use two underscores. The choice is yours, whichever you feel comfortable, you can use that. In the same way for italic task, instead of double star, you can use single star and between these two stars, you can have your text which you want to be italic. In the same way, you can use also a single underscore, right? When I execute this, you can see the text which is written is coming as bold and italic. Next, what if I want to give horizontal lines in my Jupyter Notebook, right? So for giving 
horizontal lines in Jupyter Notebook, I am using three hyphen symbols, right? And in the same way, I have just a display message, any random message that you want to display. And then I want one more horizontal line after the sentence, right? When I execute this, you can see I have two horizontal line and my message in the center. Again, this will improve the readability of your code or if you want to separate some sections in your Jupyter Notebook. Next comes the ordered list, right? So I want to give a list of let's say languages, right? So you can see we are following a particular order, Python, Java and Julia, right? So you have to give here one dot and again a space is very important here, two dot space, three dot space and it goes on. In the same way we have a tagged version also. So for ordered list you will use opening tag as ol and closing tag as slash ol and in between this you can mention your list element by using the li tag. If I execute this you can see I have my ordered list of languages as Python, Java and Julia. In the same way I have unordered list also. So unordered list you have to use a hyphen symbol followed by a space or you can use a ul tag. In between the ul tags you have to give your list tags. So again I have Java, Python and HTML in my unordered list. The only difference here is you will get a bullet symbol in you know big black heading because you're using hyphen symbols and there we are getting actual numbers as 1, 2 and 3. So this is the difference between ordered and unordered list. The next section is the most interesting for this session which is the internal and external link, right? So let's say I want to jump to the top of my notebook. So I will click on this back to top button and it is taking me to the top of my notebook, right? Let's again I want to go to the ninth section which is internal and external link and I click on it and it's jumping, right? So how this works? Let's go back again and see this section, right? So here I'm giving a anchor tag, right? This A stands for anchor tag and then I have a hypertext reference. This hypertext reference gives me the source, right? So in source I am writing hash one dot hyphen headings. So first thing is wherever you have spaces in your sources you have to replace the space with a hyphen symbol, right? So as you can see in my ninth heading which is internal and external link, I have a space all, I will replace all the spaces with hyphens, right? And once I execute this and I click on this, it is going to take me to this part, right? So the second part is how it is coming to this section. So this is how you are defining the link here. This one hash is for the heading and the rest of the message is for your Jupyter Notebook to know that this is where it is matching the source of hypertext reference, right? So once I do this, back to top, internal external link, both are working. Now let's check what is happening in back to, take, back to top also, right? So I'm giving here square brackets, inside square bracket I have given my anchor tag and in anchor tag I have mentioning my hypertext reference source as what is markdown. Now where this what is markdown is returned, right? So it is written at the first heading of my notebook right and this is just a message which I want to display here which is back to top right so if I click on back to top it is taking me here this is the you know you can say link or this is the source for my back to top button which I have given at multiple places in my notebook all right so this is for internal links if you want to give external link you just have to replace the hypertext reference with any website for which you want to provide link. Let's say I want to provide a link for my Twitter homepage, right? So what I have done in href, I have mentioned the website link and whatever text you want to display. So for now, I want to display visit Twitter. If I do shift enter and click on this button, it is going to take me to my Twitter homepage. All right, next topic is how you can insert image in your Jupyter Notebook. So one very simple way is you can click here, make sure that it is the markdown which is selected for this cell type. Then you can go to edit. In edit section, you will find a insert image button here. On insert image, you can choose file and click on OK. And then you just have to press shift enter. As soon as you press shift enter, you can see your image is being displayed here. Right now, there is one other way, which is the tagged way, which gives more flexibility in terms of handling the size of your image. Right. So here I have mentioned a image tag inside that I have a source property in which I am simply mentioning the name of my image. Right. And where this image is located, the image is located at the same place where I have my notebook 
or my current working directory right so this is the image that i want to be displayed here and then i'm giving width and height properties for my image when i execute it i will get a image at which is by default centered and the width and height i already mentioned right all right the last topic for the day is how to insert a video to your jupyter notebook so again we can use a video tag and then you have to mention controls here in source you can give the name of your video file so for me it is python underscore ides dot mp4 again you can mention the width and height the important thing is where this video is located so for me it is located in my current working directory where i have created my notebook i will uh, i will suggest that you keep the video in the same folder right so once i execute this you can see the video is embedded in my jupyter notebook if i want to play it you can click on play button and some other buttons are also available to you by default all right guys thanks for watching in case of any question please feel free to use the comment section happy learning and stay safe